All right, I'm back. No worries. I'm back to see a climb to the close. That's what I, to the closing bell. All right. And uh, sorry about that. I have a lot of storm here. A lot of storming going on here in this area. A lot of heavy duty wind, big time outside. But I'm here to back to see a climb to the closing bell, everyone. So welcome back. Elaine Nelson, hey, there you are. Yep, I'm back. Uh, we got just big time storm damage here in this area. That's just like the, we, we got so much trouble here. We're almost in as much trouble as the shorts are right now, everybody. <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, but one of the things I was thinking about while I was, while I was uh, down there with my downtime was how grateful I am to the good Lord above for giving me enough smarts to figure out this connection that I never had made before till I, and probably never would have discovered if I hadn't started this channel, everybody. It's the, that's the truth of the matter. That's the truth. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, there, there've been many, many, many benefits from this channel that, uh, having been created here over this uh, period of time, many, many benefits have been come from the development of this channel. And, uh, that includes the uh, the friendships that I've built with so many people here on this channel, the people that truly do love one another and care about one another and uh, want to see everybody prosper together. And uh, and not only that, but enjoy life together. Have a good... This uh, company, SoFi, in case you didn't see, is a partnership developing today. An announcement with a, this company, N-E-L-N-A-T, uh, they missed expectations here recently, apparently 26 days ago, but uh, I'm looking at the year to date chart on this stock here and that looks freaking good, folks. And they just signed a deal apparently with SoFi, all right, Nelnet Incorporated. So we go over here and copy this, Nelnet Incorporated, copy, go to Google and see what is going on with SoFi and this company here. And I'm not sure where this news was was put out, but someone told me about it earlier today. And uh, I actually pinned this because I thought it was that important. Uh, let's paste it in here and let's put in SoFi and uh, we'll try just that first. S-O-F-I and Nelnet Inc. What do we got? Nelnet versus SoFi. What do you mean versus? Okay. I'm trying to find this, folks. Just give me a second here. Partner with SoFi. SoFi at work. This is a new word that came out today by one of our fish here. This is one of the reasons that we're here on this channel all together because we we uh, we share information. And I got another image saying, error, YouTube is not as receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, viewers will experience buffering. And uh, I almost am of, of the belief that if I get shut down today, I might just not. <laughs> come back on, but I think she's going to fly here. I think she's going to go off. And uh, I think we got an hour to see the volume jump up quite a bit. And I tracked it at 159 and the volume was at 29,527. So there's very little volume here recently, but folks, 2 million shares over the last is hurting them because they don't have that many shares left here to keep borrowing to run us down with. All right, and uh, I thank you for finding me again. Uh, it lets me know that a lot of people do have me here on their notifications uh, because when I do come back up, I get a lot of people back on the channel pretty quickly. So I'm glad and I thank you for doing that. Um, I want to thank you also for streaming my music. Those of you that have been doing that on Apple Music or Google, 
play or whoever is you know soundcloud or uh any of those that are out there if you're listening on those i appreciate it and uh streaming my music and if you're downloading every once in a while i appreciate that that also helps this channel a lot uh by listening to my original music and my songs on youtube my playlist on there you'll enjoy there's over 120 songs on my playlist on youtube and if you like music of all types and varieties you'll hear it from me and my friends from all around the world that have helped me create that music over all these years. And uh, so right now, what I'm doing is I'm watching the sofa. I start to make a move up. And the reason that I say that is because we got some volume that is going to start building in here. And I, I think it's going to push these shoves into a corner, these shorts. GameStop stock looking good. All right. GME making a move, apparently. <clears throat> And NNI, this is a company that apparently SoFi has just gotten some sort of a partnership with. I'm trying to find it here. Find it interesting that somebody was recently talking about uh, a comparison between these two, but apparently they've just made some sort of a partnership. All right. So uh, we'll see here if I can get a verification that I'm a human being or not. And then maybe they'll let me get on over here to this story. And I don't even like this. You don't need to verify anything on me, really. No, nope, you're done. Goodbye. All right. But this company, NNI, apparently, and this is their chart over the last year to date, and it looks very strong right now. They're in a nice upward position. And, folks, this company has uh, a dividend that they pay out. All right, and this company has a partnership now created with SoFi is what someone told me this morning, in case you weren't aware of that, and I didn't tell anybody about that earlier. But SoFi right now, folks, I think she's un she's going to be unleashed. I think it's time to release the Kraken, and I think it's going to start right here and now because I just quite frankly don't believe these shorters have enough volume to keep it down. I think they used the $2 million this morning to make that happen, and they used another million or so to make that happen. And I think now there's no chance for them to run it down any further. I think I love a, a, a bottom here to see a price drop all the way down to 716 a share. And then the next low I see is here at this number is promising. 727 a share. Okay? So they went from 716 a share right there on that low to this low, the second low established at, at 1044, and that was 721. So 716 to 721, folks, is a five cent increase on the low. And over here, the next one went to 727, a six cent increase to the low. And now, where are we? 729, two cents higher off of that low. So here we see an increase of five cents. Here we see an increase of six. Here we see an increase of two from where we are right now. So we're gaining on each and every low of the day, substantiating a higher low each every low of the day. All right, that's what we're seeing right now. And uh, I think she's going to keep climbing because I'm not the only one that's looking at that. I have a feeling that these big investors, they're going to be coming in. And there they come now, folks. Take a look at those green candlesticks. Wow, look at that upturn on everything. Let's refresh this page right now. At 3 o'clock, it is 3 o'clock. Let's see what starts happening at 3.06, everyone. Let us take part in a 3.06 run. Everybody, let's see what happens at 3.06. My opinion is five more minutes of them trying to get to this low that they had earlier today of 727, and then she's going to run, and I'm going to watch her, and I'm going to watch it from 306 on. So here's your cup, your handle, your drop, and here comes your friggin' pop, everybody. Get ready to load up right here, because she's popping off of this. She's already popped off it right here at 727. And now she's popping off a 728. Look at this. We got 24 people on the channel right now with me. Anand Patel, GameStop is looking good. All right, I'll take a look at them. I'll look at GME.
I'm going to leave this one here. I'm going to put, I'm going to take another one. Look at this one. True leaf looks good. GME folks. Someone's mentioning to take a look at it. So I will. You know, I'm bummed out because I had about 80 or 90 people on this channel with me. And now I see I only have 24 after them kicking me off. <laughs> Dame stop looks good up a half a percent. Okay. Well, I know that GameStop price was over 400 a share at one time. <laughs> and I see that GameStop on the 27th was at 18 and now 15. That's a lot worse than SoFi has been treated lately. A lot worse. <laughs> We're looking much better than that. We're not being dominated that much like GameStop is right now. They're playing it even harder, trust me. that Those numbers prove it. These, these numbers make it beyond the shadow of a doubt. They're working this thing hard. Had the price all the way down here to 11 something and run it all the way up here to 1830 and then run it all the way down here to 13 something and all the way back up here to 15 and then all the way down here. And then folks, this is just over the last six months. Okay. So GameStop has been getting slaughtered. It is recovering right now, but man, they working that freaking thing. And right now there's the cap. So I'd be careful. At 1526, if it breaks over that, it might be a good time to buy some. But if not, don't do it. Now, I see here YouTube is error not receiving enough video to maintain the stream again. And as I said to you guys earlier, I am getting massive amounts of heavy, heavy wind here in Michigan right now. We're just getting pounded with this northwest, nor'easter coming in here. Crap. Virtually no signal here. And we got kids coming home. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. If they were out with their parents and doing activities and things during the day and grocery shopping or whatever, they're all coming home and they're all logging on with their big old supercomputers at home and their game, uh, their built home, homemade computers with these massive capabilities to do all kinds of digital processing in uh, media. And uh, they're killing this this thing here. Wow, cannot keep up with it. And uh, this this is horrible. I see now there's nothing going on on this screen. I don't know whether any of you are seeing this 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 right now, or if my face is frozen because I'm looking over here. My face is frozen on this screen. But I'm gonna stick stick it out here, and I'm gonna watch SoFi right here very closely. Because I expect here at right now in one minute for this vision to change. I think we're going to get a different viewing angle. Uh, Cleon Compolis, earnings are coming fast. Then we see who is the last laughing. That's right, folks. There were one month and three days away from earnings on April the 29th. And it's going to get nasty, boys. In between now and then, SoFi is going to have a lot of people coming in on expectations of earnings being excellent. And they should be excellent. They will be excellent. They are executing. And we're going to see excellent earnings. All right. And I see this low again, 727 was what we saw at 148. They're tried for it right here now again in desperation. They cannot drive it down like they had it down this morning to $7. And I want you to be aware of something, folks. It is right now 306. Watch what happens to SoFi's price from 306 on. And I hope I can get over here and get this thing to uh, refresh so I can show you. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close some of these windows that I got open. I'm going to close that one. I'm going to close this one. I'm going to start uh, trying to get less channels open up here. Um, TCNNF. I told you that looked good when it was right here this afternoon. I told you it looked like it was going to run up. All right. Mara. I'm looking here at the one day. Barely red. There's nothing there. Get over here to GameStop, watching it closely, looking at the six month, man, the one day, good for you. But man, that thing's being manipulated a lot. BIT coin, 70,000 again and rising, just like I said it would be. Morgan Stanley, we're going to close this down. 
right here. We're looking to see uh, how many shares were offered. And then we saw that there were actually 862.5 million. And now I want to see if there's anything else about this. No, there is not. There's nothing. It just says that they're the ones that are offering 862.5 million. 1.25% interest they got. Do 2029, folks. Five years from now. And then SoFi will do the same dang thing. They'll just, if they haven't already reached the number where all the people have cashed in or cashed out, they'll just do it again and lower the interest rate again. And they'll find just as many people that want to do it to them again, do it for them again. All right? Trust me. Well, you don't have to trust anything I say, folks. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just here, an old guy, for entertainment purposes. And I'm watching SoFi right now as I come back over to it, and I see very, very little interest or inspired sellers here. I don't see anyone afraid but the shorts. And the reason I know they're scared is because they've been forced to go back into the borrow bit where they're borrowing again and borrowing and borrowing. When they start borrowing, they got problems on their hands. They got problems now. And I'm watching this. Six, uh, 308 p.m. right now. Th 32, 480. Let's write that down. At 2 p.m., we'll say there was 32 million. All right, because there's 32, 490 now. And uh, I'm not sure where we're going to end up. But I think that there's a likelihood and a very strong likelihood that we're going to end up over 40 million shares. And if we do get to that number, folks, if we somehow get to that number, this price is going to be back up around 750. I'm just going to let you know. And interestingly enough, you guys remember yesterday what I said to you. Some of you asked me what we thought we were going to open tomorrow. And I said 755. Well, this morning in pre-market, the price was 754. This morning in pre-market, seven fifty-four was SoFi's price. In case you weren't paying attention, I know some of you get up early and monitor that, so you know that what I'm saying is true. But uh, right now, I still cannot get this screen over here to refresh to see what you guys are saying to me. There's nothing coming through, so I have to close this out completely. I just close it. There's nothing coming through. And now I'm going to come over here and try to open it up on this screen here. Because I can't get anything to function over there. There's nothing going on on that monitor screen. I can't read anybody's comments. And I'm going to refresh it now on this screen here. And hopefully we will see this thing pop up over here in a second. With a brand new screen for us all. Uh-huh. Up oh, toggling to 729 again. Keep on keeping on, baby. Oh, I guarantee you they're going to try to stop this thing down 13 cents today. They're going to make a point to try to stop it down 13 cents today. YouTube, what are you doing? YouTube, why are you screwing around with me? <laughs> YouTube, what the hell are you doing? Look at everything going up here this afternoon. Look at Clean Spark rising now. BITF has been driven down with the thing over 70,000 a coin. It's ridiculous. <laughs> SOUN trying to manipulate it down to, but SOUN looking very firm right here, holding up nicely. It's at the same low. Same thing they're trying with SoFi, but they're not even close to SoFi's low this morning. They could do it with sound, but SoFi is a lot more resilient than that, people. And it's not going to go any lower. It's already after 3.11 p.m. And they can't shove it any freaking lower, people. Too bad, so sad. I'm glad they're mad. And I know they are because they've all lost a lot of money in the last week. Every single shorted position has been losing money. Every one of them yesterday were disgusted with themselves and decided to try with their best again this morning to borrow 2 million shares to avert a disaster. And that's what they did. And uh, one thing I'm going to do here now, I'm going to go to SoFi Institutions.
I'm going to look at SoFi Institutional Ownership just here before we go anywhere. And I want to take a look at something here with uh, right now 47 minutes remaining of trading on the day. And I do believe that SoFi is on her way. We'll see if they start coming in. We're going to monitor this volume closely. 32 million 626. 32 million 626. 5. 3627. 2. 32627. 3. 16. There's 100 shares. 32628. And I'm monitoring these numbers because I want to see the price rise. 729 now. 32,628,4. 32,628,8. Now 9.30. 100 shares bought there. Happily purchased at 728. 32,636,1. 32,637. 1,000 shares happily purchased. 32,637,373. 32,637,578. 203 shares just bought. 32,638,472. 32,643. That's 20,000 shares, folks. Here we go. 32,644. They're going to be looking for these bigger uh, bigger fish coming in. 32,645. I'm looking for big jumps here. I want to see the big fish make a move here. And I think they're coming right now. 3.13 p.m. exactly. 3.13 in case you're keeping track. That is the time, 32.652. Price is hovering between 7.28 and 29. I'm looking at these numbers here right now. I want to focus on how much it's down in percentage. I see 2.15 down, now 2.21 down. I'm watching these numbers here, 2.15 down again. And I'm watching these, 2.21. This is how the computers trade, 2.15 221 coming again, most likely. Let's see what happens. There it is once more. And I'm not looking at this number 728. I'm looking at these numbers here. I'm looking for the move right there. 221. And looking at this number that it's alternating between 228 again. And I'm watching this very, very closely. And why? Because this is where I'll make a move. 220 just then. Down only 220. I'm watching these. Now only down 222. 221 again. Watch these numbers right here. When they start coming in big, these numbers will change quickly, folks. This is when you want to know and watch. 218 down now. That's good. Watch in here. 221 down. 218. Now we're toggling 218, 221. This looks good to me. This looks good to me. 215 now down. Good. Back to 221, 215. Now do 219. Forget about the 221. Let's see if we get to move back to between 228 now. <clears throat> they they counterattack 221 again. I'm watching these numbers right here to know whether to come in again right here or not. I want to see some movement here. I want to see some big movement here. And I expect to see it. I just have a gut feeling that it's going to happen. Now down 235. And that's the first time we've seen that. So they're trying to take it even lower here. 315. Down 235. Now 229. We were just seeing 218 and 215. And now we're looking at 241. See that? And now they're trying even harder. They're using all they got. Bring the guns, baby. Bring it on. Well, you got a problem, Shorty. The, the low today was 716. And we're now at 728, and that's problematic. And I can almost guarantee you that the high today, you can see, was 746. And so if you subtract 716 from 746, that's 30 points. They want to close this down 15 points off the high, 15 cents off the high. They want to close this down at $7.31. That's what they want to close, 731. They want to be right in the middle off of that high and that low is where they want to close the day. And that's what they're going to try to do. I, My opinion, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right? They don't want this damn thing closing up near the high because they see what happens the next day after that occurs. They see it. Uh-oh. Yep, look at these. 
this is cool. You get to watch this in faster motion here when you get back and refresh the screen. Now only 228, 235, 228, 235, 228 again. Swing it here, folks. Looks good. Come on. Start on in here, folks. 32,800 now. We're only 800,000 shares, folks, since 2 o'clock. That's low. In 15 minutes, only 800,000 shares. Question to be asked is, who's selling that 800,000 shares? Who's selling them? And the next question is to be asked, how come they can't make the price fall any lower than 728 here? Why is there resistance here when it, that 728 resistance wasn't here this morning at 1018? It sure, it sure is having trouble getting back down here, though, to 716, isn't it? It's not going to do it. <laughs> it looks very impossible for them to achieve that. There's a 727. Briefly seen 727 right there. And by the way, <clears throat> folks, that happens to equate this number that we saw right here. At 148 today, we saw him attack it again right before 2 o'clock. And that was the price, 727. And there you saw it touch it again. And it resists. It resists at 727. It says, no, I don't think I'm going to go that direction. I think I'm going to go up from here. And I'm over here, folks. I'm going to be watching these these guys right here. This this is what I'm going to be watching today, this afternoon, as we go into the close. I cannot see a single dang thing over here that anyone is talking about on this channel right now. This one that I loaded up for YouTube, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Isn't that freaking pitiful? That's the YouTube channel that I loaded up there, and you can see what it looks like now. Absolutely nothing. Because, and I said, we got two factors, major, strong, strong winds blowing right now, and little kids all over the internet, millions of little kids on the internet playing their video games at 3.19 p.m. Oh my God, look at that. This actually is starting to show a screen. It looks as though we may get a screen with a YouTube page show up. I don't know though. I'm not sure. I'm just going to put it back down here until it does. And I'm going to get back over here to SoFi. And I want to watch this thing bounce. I want to see this thing bounce right now. I want to get in on this chart and I want to look at what they're using in the way of volume, which I know is virtually none. But... Anybody, I wish to hell I could see what people are saying because I have a feeling some of you people are telling me about the GDP that just came out. And uh, hopefully here, YouTube will eventually load up. It, it's trying right here with all its muscle and all its little heart. It's trying like the little red caboose, <laughs> whatever that story was. <laughs> the little red train that could. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> That's what this channel's doing right here. <laughs> wow. Says, I think I can. I think I can get you a signal. I think I can. I think you'll be able to use it. 726, bring it shorty. Mind you, not forget what today's low was. 11 cents lower than where the resistance for you is now. <laughs> Ah, that's not good news for you, Shorty. You should be able to accomplish this rundown and make it go even redder. Come on, show us some real gut and instinct. Let me show you what you got. Let me show what you got. You got nothing left. You got nothing, and I know it. And everybody on this channel knows it, too. And uh, almost like I got nothing here on the screen for YouTube to show up on this channel. And uh, I'm going to try it again. There it is. There's YouTube loading up. Da 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 di da di da ba da ba da ba ba di da 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 da
boop, can't load screen. See how I go over the X and I'm ready to just close it out and suddenly it starts to do something. It's like, oh, don't close me now. I'm just getting ready to load up for you. It's a little teaser. I put my thing over the red X. I'm ready to shut the whole thing down and start over. And it goes, oh, look, I'm going to show you Robin Hood here, Mr. Inventor 93. And I'm sh getting ready to sh right on the verge. And this page is slowing down Firefox to speed up your browser. Close this page. Can't even load up freaking YouTube. Sorry, piece of crap. Here it comes now. Look at it piping in You're like a locomotive coming in here, folks. The speed with which this page loads up is phenomenal. And so we're going to get now onto this channel, my channel, view your channel. And we're going to get now onto the site showing YouTube and my channel and my broadcast, which probably has two people left watching it now. And uh, here we go. We're right now on it now. Singing Stock Guru. All right. What have we got going on here? Where is my latest video? Part two. Here it is right there. There's part two. And we've got 45 people on here with me right now for some crazy reason. And you're watching how rapidly this loads up. And now, finally, after 20 minutes, I'm going to get to see what you guys have been saying and get to read all of your comments. And it might happen within five minutes from now that I can see your statements. We're going to leave this again. And I'm almost very frightened to move this channel and this page over. So I'm just going to drop it down and we'll leave it there. And we're going to watch SoFi run to the sky. Come on, baby. 33,454,000 now. Let's get over here to this chart and see what's happening. Look at these greens coming in here. Uh-oh. We got a lot of green coming. Oh, boy, those shorts will be bumming. Oh, yeah, Catfish is going to be humming a song to make SoFi move along. Look at all that green in between all the teeny tiny reds. Shorts are all lost and they're losing their heads. Ah, there comes the green, if you see what I mean. Look at her climbing here right on time. She's going to jet. <laughs> Don't forget, I told you not to short. So if I regret if you do, that's what I've been telling you. Ha <laughs> ha, your shorts are getting screwed. Oh, yeah. There's nothing they can do to keep from getting screwed. <laughs> the shorts are doomed. Uh-huh. You can see it's true. <laughs> uh-huh. The shorts are all screwed. Oh, yeah. The shorts are all screwed. It's true. You can see it's true. You'll see. That the sore. Hey, look at Russell Index right now, folks, making a nice burst to the upside right here in the last part of the day. That's the Russell Index that SoFi's in, making a nice climb here, very end of the day. And Shorty's going upstream, baby. Shorty's swimming upstream or against that uh, tide because the tide is rising and they are up to here, folks. They're up to here. Oh, yeah. That Russell Index. Yes, she's rising. Ah, so surprising. Russell Index. She's climbing. Oh, yeah, it's perfect timing. So far. Uh, we are going to keep a very close eye on this today. And ladies and gentlemen, the closer eye is going to be kept on these shorts and how many shares they run out of and win. And then we'll know. You'll know when the shorts have run out of that last 750,000 shares, folks. We'll know it. Because the price will do the same thing it's done every time they ran out before. And I've shown you today. Those of you that are here on the channel. Now, let's bring us the channel back up here again. Try it one more time. Man, she's running, folks. Look at this. She's really loading up right now. She's at record speed. 
Get out of her way, folks. Ha! There we go. Now we got a lot of people's comments. All right. Very good. Ashish Shash. All right. Where are we getting down here to everybody's questions? GameStop is looking good. All right. Cleon Karam Pilas. Ah. Cleon Karampias. Karampias. <laughs> I like it. Cleon Karampias, I believe it is. Uh, Cleon Karampilius. Karampilius. I'm not sure which one it is, but it still sounds good. Cleon Karampilius. Earnings are coming fast. Then we see who the, does the last laughing. David G. Very bearish price action today, Catfish. I really hope next earnings will turn us around. It's going to be between now and the next earnings that will turn around. Ashish Shah. What would be a good entry point for PLTR? When I got in at $11 and $7, <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, let me move this over. There's a lot more people here to comment. Uh, we're going to move this over here, and we got to get this like so. There we go. And we got it now. Yay, everybody. Look at that. It's fantastic. We can see what you're saying. I want to thank you for being here with me, everybody, as I start scrolling up here. All of your comments. There are tons and tons of them I see now that have been here. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll have to look at PLTR right now to get an idea on that. Um, I'm looking at GameStop right here. I see that it is making a little bit of a move. But I want to see this. PLTR. Planeteer. Palantir. I call them Planeteer. Palantir. Let's look for a good entry point on PLTR. All right. Well, <laughs> and I mentioned this to you because I've owned this stock for over a year now, and I wanted you to see the one-year chart, all right? And the, re the reason that I mentioned you asked where a good entry point would, would be, I'm going to show you right now because I'm going to refresh this page. Hopefully, it'll load up in there. There is your uh, chart today, but I'm looking for the one-year chart, and you can see right here what this thing has done from April down here in the $7 range, and then bought it again in here in the $11 range, right in this right in this niche is where I call it this. So I bought some here saw in the $11 ranges, and uh, I even added at 13 when they pulled it uh, back down to about right here. I think it was no 14, 13. That was the number that I came back in on it some more at 14, 13. I thought it was 13, 13, but it was 14, 13. So I own all these positions. But man, here's your two pullback points. The next one's going to be somewhere around 255 would be a good entry point. And I would also suggest maybe even 2298. Okay. When they run it down, these will be the numbers they run it down because that's where they ran it down to before. But I really think this thing is going to keep going up and just like SoFi has done. And this is the thing for you to understand the most that you should understand looking at this chart. And you can go back to the very first time they reported earnings, a uh, positive earnings report. And they made a very small move up from their earnings report, which came out here and they went up to there. But then on their next earnings report, they jumped to there and they're here. They've jumped to there. Folks, these are profitable earnings calls. And each one of these earnings calls where they show greater profitability gets more institutions in and more share price rising. And SoFi is going to do the same thing. They did not move up that much. SoFi did not move that much up on their first um, profitability call, but they're going to on this second one. And this is exactly why these son of a guns have been borrowing so many shares as of late to try to run it down before the final approach to the earnings call where they're going to shove this thing up to $13 on earnings day, possibly. In the 12s, and the low 12s is highly possible. And I believe that wholeheartedly because I've seen them do it before. And I've seen them do this before, before the earnings. I've seen them do this one month before the earnings. And if you want to see what I mean, we're a month and three days away from earnings. So let's go to July the 31st for an example. When the price hit 1170, uh, when it was July the 31st last year, right here when the price hit 1170. And what did they do one month? 
and three days before that, okay? July the 31st, you're going to go back here to July, down here to June the 31st. Here we are. And what did they do three days before that? Look at this price. June the 23rd, and it was at 771. Folks, that date of the 23rd, okay, was exactly one week and one month. To get to that low was one week and one month before it got to that high of 1170. One week and one month before it hit 1170. It was there. And that's where we are now. Do you see the correlation? Do you see the similarity of it? This day right here when the price hit 724 and 682 was on the 19th. That's one week and 10 days. That's one week and 10 days from the earnings call. So back here, you saw the price when it was down in July the 31st when they did that earnings call and the price hit the highest it's ever been of 1170 this year. Folks, you can see exactly what they did and when they got to the low of 771 was on June the 23rd, one month and one week. One month, one week, folks. Amazing. And the price was at 771 and went all the way up to 1013 before it even got to that earnings call. That's why I believe that in two weeks we could go over 10 and then get a pullback down to 894 again like they did before they run it to 1170, everyone. So I think after today, it's highly probable and possible that this price could make a run quickly over $10, a drop back to the 894 before earnings day when it goes up to 12s and 13s possibly. That's my call. I could be wrong, but I sure as shit don't think so. All right, because they've done it before. Now I'm going to change this to analytics. Because I can't see uh, a lot of the things on this screen over here right now that you guys are saying. But I can see what's happening with this stock price. And I, I've seen it before. That's all I can say. I've seen it before. And what a coincidence of the timing of it that we're literally four days apart from what we just saw there, right? We're right there, folks. I'm glad I'm here to able to show this to you so you can understand that it's all been, this movie's all been played already. This is a rerun. We're watching a redistribution and no sequel or rerun is ever as good as the first time. <laughs> None, no matter what it is you're watching. And uh, that's why they're trying to rerun this morning's price of 716, but they're freaking, <laughs> unfortunately, they're eight cents over that here now at their maxed out capacity. They're still eight cents off of that low. And there's now new support, not at 716, but eight cents higher. You can all see that right here on your screen. And I know some of you bought a little bit more hair high than this today. And don't worry, you're fine. You're going to be very fine. And I think what I just showed you there hopefully will help you understand why you're going to be so fine. And I want you to know, folks, that uh, right now there are 60 people on this channel. And I'd like to ask you if you can do me a favor here. The time right now is 3.38 p.m. Uh, almost. And at 3.38, I would like to ask you all at the same time at 3.38 to please press the like button. I don't want you to smash it. I don't want you to bash it. I don't want you to crush it. I don't want you to pound it. I don't want you to break your sensitive mouse button. I want you to simply reach down with this pinky finger and hit the like button if you can do it. And if not, you can pick any digit you want. I don't care. But 
hit that like button in one minute and five seconds from now. Not now. Don't do it yet. We're going to hold off here for just a jiffy pop. And speaking of pop, that's what's about to happen to this SoFi price, folks. It's going to pop. All right? It's going to pop on these people. It's going to burst on them, and they don't even know it. These shorters, well, they know it all right, because they've already seen how many shares are left to borrow today at 4 o'clock, 450,000 when they used to have 10 million. They already know this bubble's about to break. And when they run out completely of the shares that they have to borrow, this thing is going to ascend just like it did the last time they ran out of shares completely. It's going up. It's going to go up two bucks like it did the last time, at least two dollars or higher because they got no shares left to borrow with. You guys might be saying, what are you talking about, Catfish? Well, I'm going to go over here for you so you can pick up on this in case you didn't know. Go to the bookmarks. Go down here to this. It's called, I have it listed as cost to borrow. This site is called companiesmarketcap.com. And I happen to have SoFi in here as a default. And you can see right now, shares available to borrow right now, as of late, have gotten very freaking slim. <laughs> They used to have 10 million shares on March the 20th. Now they just had 450,000 today. They've had to return some shares and this is costing them. All right, they're returning shares and that's costing them money. And if they're going to return any more, it's going to cost them even more money because they got to start buying to return those shares and they need to start buying now. They're trying as late as they could to start buying, folks. They tried to drive it down as much as they could on the borrowed shares, but that's not working for them this afternoon. And now they've got to return. They've got to return them. You know why? Because then they need to borrow them again at 4.30 in the morning. That's what they've been doing every week. Right here, what time did they borrow the, these here in the morning? That they had returned to 2 million, 1.7 million. They borrowed them at 4 in the morning. Then they returned all these and borrowed them all out the very next day at freaking right here. Look at that at four in the morning again, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, four, three thirty. They were down to eighty five thousand shares at three thirty. And the next day they drop it again. They returned a few and now they're down to three hundred thousand shares at four in the morning. And then they return them for a couple of days, and now they're down to 400,000 again at 4 in the morning, folks. This is every single day, and they keep depleting it down to today, 450,000 shares at 3.30 and 4 in the morning. You see what time they're doing it every day? You see that? And they've got to return them, folks. They've got to return the shares They've got to get back to 10 million here. They can't completely run out because how are they going to keep manipulating the price if they do that again, which the mistake that they made back here when they ran out of shares completely on December 23rd until this date, that cost them big time. SoFi's price went up big time on them when that happened. And here again, you can see from January the 19th, when they completely ran out of shares to borrow on January the 19th, Folks, that cost them big. On January 19th to this date, January 29th, SoFi's price jumped from January the 19th to January 29th. You can see the price move. It was at $7.37, 721 January 19th, the lowest they could get it. And they used all their shares to get it there. And then the next few days, the price went all the way up to the 29th. And that can easily be seen on this chart right here from January the 19th to the 29th. That's why the price ran up to the high on January 29th. They were completely tapped out of shares. You see that? They reached the January 19th number by borrowing 10 million shares. And on the 29th, the price had skyrocketed on them. They got to that number January 19th of 721 for the low from up here in the high eights down to 721 by borrowing those shares on the 19th. That's how they made it fall to that low. But then they had no shares left. So the price went up 50 cents and went up more and went up more and went up more. 
and doggone it, on the 29th, when they finally had to return those shares, the price was at 9.45 a share because during that whole duration from the 19th right there until the 29th, they had no shares to stop it from running up. And they're almost out of them again. Look at that today, 450,000 shares this morning. They're running out, people. That's what I'm here to explain to you. They are running out. And when they run out, the price goes up. It's as simple as that. Forget about today's manipulation on this very low volume. Look at that. We have just barely, we're almost up to 35 million shares now. And that's good. Okay. We've seen 5 million shares now from 32 million at 2 o'clock to 35, 3 million shares now. And uh, we're going to see it increase this afternoon. And the problem for them is shares is killing them now. They cannot handle this big volume with this many shares a day. Folks, this is what you need to understand. When SoFi's price was priced at 445 and ran up to 1023 a share, there was a reason it did that. The reason that it did that is because the shorts ran out of shares. The shorts ran out of shares. That's why the price went from 445 all the way up to 1023. And they were running out of shares from May the 1st when they started the attack on the great earnings call. And they ran out of shares and ran out of shares because on May the 15th right there, it was over for them. The price of SoFi started going back up to 1023 and they ran completely out of shares on the day. They only had 350,000 left on June the 14th and SoFi had gone up 125%. See, when they start running out of shares here, folks, they can't keep this price down. And look what's happening over here right now. They're freaking running out of shares, people. And I don't believe they can keep this price down because they sure as shit couldn't keep the price down when they ran out of shares over here and got fewer and fewer each day. And I don't see how they're going to keep it down running out of these shares over here and getting fewer and fewer each day. I don't see it, folks. I don't see how they can keep it up. I don't, and I keep pressing this through to you folks. You need to understand this is a war we are going to win. They might win a battle every once in a while on a daily exchange like today. They might win a little battle like today, but the war is ours and we will be the victors, everyone. Okay, let me get up here. Midwest Cannabis, you kids, get off my line, Wi-Fi. There you go. Get off my lawn. <laughs> there you go. Thomas Newman, SoFi looks very weak in my opinion. I think the stock will continue dropping until earnings. Sentiment is extremely bearish on all social media platforms. Thomas, <laughs> nice try, buddy. You're in the wrong tank to be talking like that. All right. The, the sentiment is is the way it is so heavily against SoFi because they're about to take off and they always get negative sentiment before they blast off, just like when they were attacked with three downgrades on SoFi. When they get that negative sentiment, folks, there's always a reason because they're getting desperate. And that's what they're doing right now. They're in desperation mode. And they will float the FUD all over the countryside if they can to try to stop this run. But the fact of the matter is, over the last five days, every single one of these shortened retards that shorted us here and shorted us there and shorted us there and shorted us here and shorted us all through Wednesday and Thursday, all of these people have lost their money. And that's the only reason we're even to where we are now, because this morning they went and borrowed again. 2 million shares to drop it this afternoon and today. They're just buried themselves in a deeper hole. Congratulations, Shorty. The hole gets deeper. The price keeps climbing. And the interest rate keeps rising. See where we were back here on the 6th of March at 036. 036. Interest rate is rising on them, folks. And they're running out of shares to short with, folks. They're running out of shares to short with. That's all I can tell you. And they're going to run out of them. And then the price is going to run up. Just like it did when they ran out 
when I just got to show you on this chart, when they ran out of shares to short with on this date, when they ran the price down to 721 for a low, they were completely out of shares when they did that. All right, and they're going to do it again. They'll zap all every single freaking share they can use. They're going to use it, folks. And then the price is going to run up. And I just showed you that what happened from December uh, the 29th when they completely ran out of shares and they could not stop the price from running after that. After December the 23rd, they were done. They were completely out of shares to borrow and the price went from $9.21 two days before all the way up to ten forty nine, And they were screwed. And they're going to be screwed again, folks. She's going to go from 7 to 10 and they can't stop it because they won't have any shares left to borrow. They won't. They'll be completely out and there'll be no way to stop it. And that's what I think. I could, I could be wrong, but I sure don't think so. I don't think so. One single little tiny bit. I think that just like the run up from that seven low 720s, where we are right now, by the way, that jump up happened because these bastards ran out of shares on this date right here. And that was January the 20. And then you can see over here, December the 23rd. The reason that run up went after December 23rd is because they had no shares left to borrow. So that's why I'm showing you what happened. On December 23rd, they had no shares left to borrow and the price went wild from 921 up to 1049 on them. There's nothing they could do to stop it because they were completely out of shares to borrow. And then when the st price started dropping it, that was only because they returned a few of those shares. And then the damn thing from January 14th to January the 19th, and lo and behold, on the January 19th, the lowest they could get it from in the eights all the way down to the lowest they could get it. And by God, they ran out of shares again on the 19th. They were completely borrowing them all. And then from the 19th to the 29th, SoFi's, SoFi's price from the 19th to the 29th went up and up and up and up and up and up to 945, the high that it reached on 929. See, when they run out of shares, they're screwed. And they're virtually out of shares now. All right? That's what I'm going to keep preaching to you guys because I believe it. Those of you that are on this channel, you understand now why this manipulation happens, the reason that it happens, the reason that you got all those phone calls on this date, June the 14th, and the following day, three downgrades came in because Shorty had run out of all their damn shares to short with. They had run all the way. They they had... Freaking tapped it dry, baby. On June 14th, they only had 350,000 shares. And sorry for them, but the price had gone from 445 a share all the way up to 1023 during that duration. From this period here, May the 15th, the price had dr had dr gone up from 445 a share, which they attacked with borrowed shares on that day to even get to that number, May the 15th. They borrowed and attacked with those borrowed shares to May 15th. And lo and behold, the freaking price went from 445 on that day all the way up to 1023. On this very day, they completely tapped the tree dry. They were done. They were done. They threw it in the towel and they called on the phone and begged Oppenheimer, Piper Sandler, and Bank of America to downgrade, please do this for us on June the 15th. We need you to do it tomorrow. And so, sure enough, they all came on there and they all downgraded SoFi on June the 15th. All three of them. So you now know how they do it, folks, and how they've been able to even return those shares. They needed help. And they got help from their buddies who ran the price back down from 1023 to 771, where they could save their asses and return all those shares. They were in deep, and they lost money there. They lost money on that one for sure. They lost, that hurt them. That hurt them. That that one there, they paid for that one. And then they paid, paying for it over here from December 23rd. And they paid for it over here from January 19th when they took the price down to the lowest they could get it. For the next 10 days, that cost them money. That cost them money. January the 19th, 
they ran that thing down to 721 and then that cost some money because over the next few days all the way up to the 29th it went to 945 and i easily see that from where we are right now at the same effing number almost to go to 945 and i'm calling that out because they're out of shares and they were out of shares then and they're going to be out of shares now and so that's what i think and that's what i believe and I believe every single bit of what I'm telling you 100%, even though you don't have to believe any of what I'm saying. You don't have to believe a word. But I think you can all see that what I'm showing you here makes perfect sense. They wouldn't be able to manipulate like they've been doing unless they use those damn borrowed shares that they're virtually out of now. And you can see every single day lately, they've been borrowing, maxing out the bank. They've been tapping that tree dry. They've done it every morning at 4.30 in the morning here at least recently. There it is at 4.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock. There's how many they had left at 4 o'clock, 500,000 shares. Then on this one here, they only had 85,000 shares left at 4 o'clock, 3.45 in the morning. And they had even less than that. They ran it all the way down to 35 million shares. They're at 35,000 shares at 3.15 in the morning. Folks, I'm telling you, there's a correlation between running out of shares to, sh to stuff this price down and then the price running up when they don't have any more to do it with. And I've shown you this repeatedly on this chart. I hope it makes sense to you. The reason the price went from the 19th at 721 and even got to that low was because they borrowed shares on that day to make that happen on the 19th. They borrowed the crap out of them on the 19th to make that happen. All right. This is what you need to understand that on the 19th, right there is the day they borrowed 10 million shares, every freaking one available to make that price fall to 721. And coincidentally, this January 19th date, freaking 10 days later, January 31st, the price was all the way up to 944. Nine days later, they were screwed on January 29th. The only way they stopped it then was because January 29th, the gap was over and they got those shares returned. Then they could start borrowing them again here recently to try to run it down. And I'm showing you folks, it's the same, virtually same time of the date on this calendar when the last time the price of SoFi ran all the way up to its record high this year, uh, July the 31st, pay very close attention that from July 31st, one month and th uh, 10 days before that, SoFi's price from July 31st back here to June the 31st and then down here to June 23rd uh, is where we are now. The price was 771 the price was 771 on June the 23rd. All right. This is one week. This is virtually exactly where we are from the next earnings call right now. And that's why the low was obtained here. One week and one month away from the earnings call on June 23rd was the lowest low they could get it. Isn't that coincidental that today we're at that same time period away from the next earnings call? We're virtually one week and one month away from the earnings call to get to that low of 716 today. Is that coincidence that we're right now one month and actually three days away and we're one month and three days away and we're at 716. And back then, I want to make you very aware of something, folks. When they did that just below, just before July the 31st and they had the price driven all the way down, to this price that I just showed you, 771, June 23rd, that th this is almost exactly where we were July the 6th. And folks, this is three weeks away from the earnings at 786, only to see 10 days later, 10 days before earnings, over $10. And I think that could happen now before they run it back to 894 and then take it to 1170. So that's why I think right now we've got a run that could happen in the next two to three weeks to go over $10, back down to 890s, and then back over to the, to the 1170s, 1250s, 1375, or however it goes on this, however high it goes on this next profitable earnings call. I could be wrong, but I don't think so, everybody. I dang sure don't think so. I don't think so one single teeny tiny bit. All right. 
So there's a correlation, believe me, between how many shares are available for these bastards to short and what happens to SoFi's price. It's as simple as that. And as far as I'm concerned, they're tapping this well dry. They've been tapping this well all week long, completely dry almost. And why the hell don't they just go ahead and take all of them? It, it, the only reason they don't take every single one of them, even though they were all the way down to only 35,000 shares on this day, the only reason that they don't take all of them is because when they have none at all, they're defenseless to the price going up. And I've proven that from December 23rd SoFi price to December uh, 14th SoFi price and from this 19th price to the 29th, both times price surged by over $2 when they're completely out of shares. All right. You look at the dates between this right here, January 19th, when they achieved a low to January the 29th, when it hit the next high. Look what happened when they had used all the shares and had nothing to stop it with. There's all you need to do, folks. And you can see why now they don't want to let them all run out. All right. Because when they did that on January 19th and used every single damn share that was available to get it down to 721, there was no way to contain it from going up and up and up and up to the highest that it got to of 945, up $2.30. Because they didn't have any shares left to borrow people. And the only reason they could stop it on that date there is because guess what they did? They returned all the shares on the 29th. And that allowed them to start using shares here again that they've been borrowing recently to run it down just 10 days before and one month before the next earnings call. Folks, I love the look of it. That's all I can tell you. I love the look of it. I'm very happy to see them doing the same thing that they did, the exact same thing they did one year, I mean, uh, before July the 31st when the price went to 1170 I'm seeing an identical pattern here, exactly identical. And I make sure that you all can understand the, the validity of what I'm saying and the weight of what's behind what I'm saying. The reason that this price is being manipulated down here at the exact same time is because it worked so well for them before. They know that it works, and so they're going to use this as a tool. When they did this back in July, and they knew they were going to run the price on July 31st to 1170 a share, 210 million shares traded that day. They had this all in the works, but they decided one month and one week before July 31st, let's run this price down to 771. And I bet you they borrowed a bunch of shares to do it too. March, April, May, June, July 31st. June, July 31st, there it is. <clears throat> yeah, this date right here, July the 13th, when they ran the price down to 877 a share, Morgan Stanley downgrade. And they borrowed a bunch of shares on that downgrade and ran it down to 877 a share. Then they ran it back up and made, got all their shares returned. Yep. 7.20 right now. We're at 4 o'clock right now. I'm ringing the closing bell, and I'm here to tell each and every one of you here that you need to be ready for a nice run for the next, regardless of what some of these people are trying to tell you over here. They don't have the record and the history that I have to prove to you that this has all been done before. It's as simple as that. Yep. Yeah, Thomas Newman, SoFi looks very weak. Yeah, J.P. Panek, is it time to trim the vice president, Chad, leaving SoFi? <laughs> no, it's not worried. There's no reason the, uh, the president connected OBS disconnected and reconnected just now. Thomas Newman, let's see. Thomas Newman says, uh, I don't understand what makes him so confident shorts are getting screwed. I just see us bleeding out slowly, making lower lows. Huh. Thomas, man, wh where, what charts are you looking at? Thomas, 
time for you to wake up and smell the coffee higher and lower lows and lower highs. All right. And I can show you on this chart very easily. Let me ask you a question. Do you not realize that SoFi's 200-day moving average six months ago was at $6 a share? Maybe you don't. Apparently, you haven't seen this chart that shows every single line riding up my trend line perfectly. But maybe you haven't seen that yet. Apparently, you don't know how to look at history to see a drop in the price and a double bottom barely below the trend line, then a nice rise and then a pullback and a gradual climb and then a double bottom below the trend line deeper than the one before, but then the price ran even higher than the previous high over here. But you're not looking at that. You don't see that this bottom right here was a price right there of $4.45 and $4.30. You don't see that price because you don't want to look at it. You want to come on here and tell us that all we're getting is higher, uh, lower lows and lower highs every day, but you apparently don't see the price was at $4.30 back here when that happened, okay? And then there was a double bottom just below the trend line. Price shot up from there, came back down to a nice lateral upwards move before another attack and a double bottom even deeper below the trend line there. And then she went doubly as high as she did before. Then you apparently don't see that again, they tried to pull it back, but it never even got close to the trend line. And the double bottom formed up here. And they're like, holy freaking crap. They were in trouble, folks. They were in deep trouble. You can't have a double bottom down here like this. And then a shoot up to there. And then a double bottom down here like this. And then a shoot up that much higher. And then a double bottom here instead of way down here below this trend line. That's ridiculous. They can't have that. So then when it got to this massive high off of this double bottom and ran all the way up to this, they said, we'll just war of attrition it and we'll borrow the crap out of shares. And they started borrowing them, folks. They started borrowing them right here. You can see them in August all through this. They borrowed shares and they ran the price down. But my God, the next double bottom wasn't down here in the fours and it wasn't down here in the fives. That's not where the next double bottom was in the fours or fives. The next double bottom freaking formed right here at six and at this, 661. And they were like, holy crap. Man, we were a double bottom down here in the fours, a double bottom here in the fives, a double bottom here where it's 661 when this last double bottom was at 477. And now they can only achieve a 661. And then today, all they can achieve is that price that they're at right now, 720 on the bottom of another double bottom right here. Now you tell me who's in trouble. You tell me that we're seeing lower lows and lower highs and we're bleeding out. Who's bleeding out here? with a double bottom here, a double bottom here, a double bottom here, a double bottom barely below the line, a double bottom here, and off we freaking go from now until the earnings call after today. You're going to see already here in the after hours the effects of what happens to those who overzealously try to attack SoFi's stock price, All right? On you see the price already up three cents in eight minutes. That's usually every day down three cents after eight minutes, but she ain't doing that anymore. She gone. Okay. Elaine Nelson, stick around long enough. He will show you Thomas Newman. <laughs> 
Uh, he just got a lesson, didn't he? We're going to have to deal with this endless cycle of up and downs from 750 to 680 until earnings for a chance of strong bullish movement. And that's only if earnings is positive. Oh, man. <laughs> only if earnings is positive. I'm positive they'll be positive because the guy in charge just says they're going to be positive and they will be positive. I'm positively positive of that. Okay. That's the only thing I can be positively positive of. And look at this price now up to 725 and after hours. I told you they were done with their games and it was all over and it was all just a bunch of smoke and mirrors today. 725 and after hours. Holy smokes. <laughs> Lane Nelson says, so fi, so fine. Right on. Tyson Durfee, good afternoon. J-Rod, DJT was cash, cash, cash today. All right. DJT, folks. That's DWAC has now changed to DJT stock. DJT stock. DJT stock. Yahoo. No more DWAC. It's a new stock. DJT. Down joins trans DJT Trump Media. Yahoo Finance. Here it is. DJT Trump Media and Technology. Oh my God, look at that freaking thing. 57.99 of 16%. He made how many billion today? Three and a half billion. Oh my God. <laughs> they are saying three at the IPO, he was going to make three billion and it went up 16% above that. <laughs> oh my gosh, how awesome is that? Thank you for letting me know that. DJT used to be DWAC. Change their name, jump up 16%. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Eric Moderna bought, uh, bought more, 555 more. Very good. Um, Eric Moderna, very cool. Cleon Corompilius, doesn't matter. It will be $10 by April 29th. That's right, and more. It'll be even that high before April 29th. They did it before, and they'll do it again, believe me. Oh, my God. DJT up 16%. Wow. Nice. Very, very, very nice move for DJT. I'm proud and happy. And by the way, in case you didn't hear, they lowered his required bond from $470 million or whatever to $145 or something million. They dropped it a lot. That's because they realized how absolutely ludicrous that it was in the first place. And uh, no one should be expected to do such ridiculous things. And uh, they knew that it was ridiculous judgment, and they know that all of it is ridiculous. But anyway, for those of you that are here with me right now, uh, uh, let's see, 10X earnings report Thursday, okay? I'm only holding 10X until the price goes over $49. I'm not going to talk about or buy anymore. I'm just going to hold what I got until it's over $49 and $99. It'll be a year, maybe, maybe a year and a half. It might even jump up into the 30s between now and then on a good report on an update about how, how well the uh, the program's going, uh, how the study's going, level three. If they get good thumbs up, I think it'll give you a... Look at this stock price of SoFi up to seven twenty-five now in early after hours. How do you like that, everybody? All right. Let's see. Uh, Johnny Leslie down a bit on SoFi today with my trade, but not the best. But I'm I'm late to the party today, Tyler. Are the, the shorts completely out of shares? Do they have any for tomorrow? Well, they have returned a few of them, but it's getting very, very slim on them right now. They got themselves in very dire straits here. They got themselves in dire straits. They don't know what to do, man. They're in a. They're going to have to call a triple downgrade. Come again, because they're running out of shares, folks. Today they ran it all the way down to only four hundred fifty thousand shares remaining to short with. This morning at four o'clock in the morning. They'll probably return 1.6 million to get up to 2 million again overnight. They will probably do that. Uh, if I go over here and try to take a look at this, let's see how many they're showing here right now. 
uh, and I was showing everybody earlier. Interestingly enough, on January the 23rd, the shorts failed to deliver 39 million shares on January 23rd. What was SoFi's price on January the 23rd? Come on up here and see where it was. The price had gone from 833. They had manipulated it down to January 23rd, 773. Okay, they had done that on 45 million and out of that 45 million, 39 million failed to be returned. All right. Holy crap, people. They're still holding all those 39 million 400. They haven't. I don't see any since then above there. I sure as shit don't see 39 million anywhere. If they weren't returned then, when will they be returned? Those are shares borrowed from brokerages. 40 million freaking shares almost on 123 that they borrowed on January 23rd to make SoFi's price fall from a price of lit earlier 840, 8.43 to January 23rd and a low of 7.73. 45 million shares traded that day. They borrowed 39 million that they failed to return because guess what? They wanted to use those shares the next day, even though the price was at 775 close on that day. They wanted to use those the next day when it hit 794 and they wanted to close it down 50 cents below that. So here's where the real 39 million shares was used, folks, was here the day after the price hit the 814 high. They came in, they borrowed those shares, and they failed to return them on January 23rd, and they used them on January the 24th, and they used those shares that they failed to return to the brokerages on January 24th to make the price fall to 753, okay? Look at that. It's back to 940 on January the 30th. One week later, it's back to 940, and they still have not returned this 40 million shares. Anywhere along this line, do you see a return of 40 million shares? Shit no, people. And where was the price on January 23rd? You might want to pay attention to where the friggin' price was. The price on January 23rd was sitting right here at 773. Where's the price closed today? 720 right now at 725 when are they going to return those shares they didn't even return them today when they could have when they got the low to 716 they should have returned them today people but they didn't when will they return those and by the way that's a that's a freaking crap load of shares to have to return 40 million shares what's going to happen on the day that they have to return those what's sofi's volume going to be on that day 80 million that day or more? All right, I'm asking a question of you guys. Mopar for life. Options going to hold this below 750 for this week unless we get a catalyst. Anything lower is just in preparation for next week. Buy shares, right? Armand, shorts have 200 million shares. Imagine what will be the price be if they have to cover halfway. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Yep. Jeff Presley, Thomas, just imagine a coil getting sprung until it can't hold and then pop all at once. That's right. That's right, Thomas. You need to understand that. Rusty Pratter, the last guy saying negative best, apparently didn't li didn't get his PhD on the streets. <laughs> ah, very good, Rusty. That's right, Rusty. That is right, Rusty. The last guy saying negative BS apparently didn't get his PhD on the streets. Yep. So now you can see that it was manipulated all afternoon because now the true sentiment is in and the price is running up. 
Oh yeah, you can definitely tell they used shorted shares to sell to one another. But what happened was they got bought by people like you and me. That's right, we bought these damn shares a day that they gave away. And the price we had to pay was the lowest of the day. And you all know this is true. The shorts will soon be screwed. You will see them come unglued. 725 a share. Oh man, she's not going to stop there. She's going to let loose everybody. She's going to run. She's going to run, run like the wind. Do 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 Folks, if you are short and you're shorting so fine, you had better listen close right down to Catfish Tie, cause she's gonna fly and fly like the wind. You will see again. This is the time, and the shorts are weak. You will find out in a month and one week, cause she's gonna fly, fly like the wind, and she will go past 10. Oh, yeah. And she's got such a long way to go. Pretty soon she's gonna cost the shorts lots of dough. Cause she'll fly like the wind. So fly flies like the wind. Do 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 so if you are here, you better listen up good. You better buy some sofa here and you should. Yeah, you should. You got to get it while you can, while she's well under 10. Because when she breaks 10, who, who may know? Who knows how damn high this so far might go? But you gotta know it's time to grow with so far like the wind. Oh, yeah, ride like the wind and to be free again. So far like the wind. All right, a little so far song for you there. Something to inspire each and every one of you musically because I am Catfish Tyler, the singing stock guru, and I'm not going to stop singing for any of you. <laughs> we are going to see SoFi and we're going to ride this thing through, everybody. She's going to run like the wind. All right. <laughs> and thank you for being here with me as I show you all the reasons that I believe SoFi is going to go up so fast. And I believe. You can see that this has been a story. This has been the same thing. Drop, double down below the trend line, off like the wind. Drop, double down below the trend line after a gradual side move, boom, boom, and off like the wind. Come over here, drop just below the trend line, boom, boom, off she goes like the wind. Drop over here below the trend line, boom, boom, off she goes like the wind. Drop below the trend line, Equal to this drop here and here lower, you've got here and here lower, and then what do you freaking think she's going to do? She's going off, people. She's going to ride like the wind. She's going up, all right? That's what I say. She is going up. That's what I say. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. This is going to rise from here, everybody. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I sing some songs and everybody sings along and everybody has a good time. And we all chant the rhythm, sing the rhyme. Oh yeah, I have a real good time. Feel the rhythm, do the beat. Oh yeah. So there's what I see. And I want you to see, folks, take a look at the angle of this previous rise here. Man, that thing went boom like that, boom like that. 
and this one got steeper. Boom, even more north and south. Oh, <laughs> this one is the same as this one here. And this next one's going to be steeper north and south. That's what I'm showing you. You got the same angle up, the same kind of drop. You got over here, after this big drop, a major climb, virtually straight up, vertically, straight up almost. And then you've got this same repeated gradual line over here. Then she drops down, and I believe she will come vertically straight up. Okay? I believe she's actually going to be more on this axis right about here. Okay? Like she was the other time before. And, folks, I think that takes us up here very, very rapidly. I know that this looks unbelievable to many of you people, but I'm telling you, this is history. You got a double barely below the line and a gradual up. You got a double way below the line and a massive spike at a very sharp angle. Then you got a double below the line and the same move up as here. Then you got a double below the line and then you got here the drop. And I think this is the equal to the deeper drop. This second one equal from this low in here, here and here. This is a deeper drop. This is a deeper drop. And this is a more straight up pop. I call that. That's what I see. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And I think it's already started right now here in the after hours at 724 a share. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm so confident of this. I want a picture. I want a picture of today's low that I got today when I bought today at the low. And that was right here. And I'm going to take a picture of it when I bought this stock today at the low. And I have a sh I have it on my stock sheet that I bought it at 718 a share. And I'm going to show you this right here. Boom, one day everybody's going to see this. Everybody. And you're all going to see your comments too, folks. That's right. <clears throat> you're all going to see your comments one day and you're going to go, oh my gosh, catfish. <laughs> I can't believe we were so worried when the price was in the sevens. I'll go, I know. We just didn't know any better. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody. She's going to go higher. <clears throat> I'm going to get over here and look at this um, SoFi shorts. I want to look at the shorts here on this. Just let me get over here real quick. Short interest. Hold on a minute. Short interest. Here we go. 154 million shares. Off exchange short, 5,071,000. Look at that. <laughs> Dark pool volume. All right, you see that? Off exchange short, 38.46%. Oh, my God. Dark pool, they are so, so screwed. And now, folks, they've been returning shares here this afternoon. They are probably the ones buying the shares right now, and the price is rising in the after hours because they're trying right now to return some of those shares. So that's what they're doing here, and they have been doing during the last four hours. And this could be an explanation for what we're seeing. Uh, some of those shares have to be returned. So they'll have them to borrow again at four o'clock in the morning like they've been doing every day. But that might be why the price is rising right now. See, they got themselves in a problem, folks. They got themselves in a real problem here. And that's what I'm here to tell you, each and every one of you. Now, I could stay here for the rest of the night talking about this stock because there's so many other things. But I want you to be aware of something, folks. When people come and go from a business that happens every day. Don't worry about the headlines that all oh, the VP and whatever. So what? Let them get on down the road. We'll get another guy in there. It has more qualifications. We'll be even more able to fill the shoes of that person and what they weren't able to possibly do. I'm not sure why. I have no idea why that person left today. I think I should go over here and try to take a quick look and see why. But I'm going to take a look at this right now. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to this and see Google. SoFi VP resigns or steps down. SoFi, SoFi VP 
uh, steps down. All right. March 21st, Mr. Chad Borton, Executive Vice President and Group Business Unit Leader, Lending and President, SoFi Bank NA, okay, provided notice of his intention to resign from his position with SoFi today, all right? And as I understand, he's leaving to pursue other opportunities. And it says right here very clearly on investing.com that the departure is set for April the 12th. So this is not a, I got to quit today because I got caught cheating uh, with one of the staff. And that's what happened to Mike Cagney, who was the co-founder of SoFi back in 2017. He was asked to step down and he resigned immediately. So you can see right here, that's not the case in this article. It says that he's leaving and he is going, the departure is set for April 12th and he's leaving to pursue other opportunities and his resignation is not due to any disagreements or disputes with SoFi, all right? I guarantee you there's going to be an announcement coming within the week or two that SoFi has already replaced this individual and I wouldn't doubt it if it doesn't happen tomorrow or the next day, all right? Because we're still 30 days away, fortunately for us, we're still over 30 days away from the next earnings call on the 29th. So we'd be able to, if we replace them, we can make that announcement because you can't only have a restriction to your uh, PR when you're within the 30 day range of your next earnings call. So I expect that they will probably make an announcement for a replacement for him pretty quickly. And I'd love it to be me. I'd love to go in there and take over that position. <laughs> I'd love to be able to go in there. Maybe Anthony will give me a call. You know, he's been over here on my channel. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here. There's 44 on the channel with me right now. And I want to ask you, please, here in the next, and we're going to do this here at uh, exactly 4.30 and 48 seconds. We're going to hit the like button. We'll start counting down and we'll hit the button at 4.31 today. So here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, and we will simultaneously depress the like button again. And I had over 2,000 views on this channel today. Unfortunately, I got cut off at around 1.30 or 2 o'clock today by weather, inclement weather in this area and bad signal coming to my machine. But it's all over now. We're green and we're going to be doing very well Thank you for hitting that like button, everyone who just did. I will hit this heart button for you for each one of those likes I see come on the screen right now. And uh, as I can see right now, coincidentally, I have an excellent condition signal with no delays and no uh, problems whatsoever as SoFi continues to rise in after hours. And one should probably be asking this question, why in the world would anybody be buying SoFi for seven twenty-five when they could have bought it today at this price, seven sixteen? Why would they pay eight cents more? I'll tell you why. Because it's because oh, it's worth it, folks. It's worth three dollars and eight cents more. It's worth four dollars and eight cents more. Just like these analysts that are five-star rated analysts have been saying. This stock is worth $12 a share. It valuates at $12. Buy it now in the sevens, everyone. They're piling in to tell you this. All of these analysts, even, even Yahoo themselves is telling you $9 on the stock at $8.97 a share target price. They all know that this thing's been manipulated down and they all know how it's been done every time it has been done. You don't think they knew that they had tapped out every one of their borrowable shares on June the 14th and they were at the end of their rope. They knew that. They knew that they had to pay them those to downgrade those stocks. B Bank of America, Piper Sandler, and uh, Oppenheimer on the next day, June the 15th, downgrading. They had to do that. They didn't have any shares left to borrow. They had to call them and ask them to help them, folks. Snakes in the grass, all of them, snakes in the grass. Yep, but I'm here to expose them and I kick them out into the road. 
where they get run over by people like you. <laughs> yeah. we, we're running, we're smashing snakes, man, right out in the road. I kick them right out of that side brush, right out into the street, and they just get squashed where they deserve to be. All right, everybody. I've been here long enough. It's time for a beer before we close out the day. As always, time for a brewski. So I'm going to take a brief moment to go get my cold beer, and then I'm going to be back. And look at all those likes that came in just then. Thank you very much. While I get a nice cold one to call it a day with. Hold on. Don't leave. And here's all the people I want to thank for making recent donations. Everybody on this page has made a recent donation to this channel. Thank you so much. Here you go. Okay, Captain's daughter's back in the tank, all right. Hey, thank you for everybody being here with me to enjoy a nice cold one. We gonna pour it right now. We gonna pour us a nice cold beer and watch SoFi go right on up from here. Ah, doesn't that sound good? I wouldn't be surprised to see old brew tank moving along here soon enough. Coming into the tank and going, mm, beer time. Uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him here with us as we shine into the last few moments of the day and watch Soap Eyes Price just go up and up and up from here. And today was a great day for Soap Eye because... It held very nicely. Its gains that we got yesterday were equaled out. And now she continues the climb. She continues the climb up and up and up, folks. And I'm pouring this beer with the perfect nickel head, which is what we're looking for. We don't want any more and we don't want any less. You must have a nickel head on a beer or you're in trouble here. So there we are. Our nickel head has been poured perfectly. <laughs> ah, yes. Look at that gorgeous head on that beer. Oh my gosh. If you guys don't know about this, a nickel head is what is required. The thickness of a nickel. There it is right there. It helps trap all those gases in there and keep them in there, folks. All right. Oh, man, that feels good on me. I was thirsty. I was thirsty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, I see I don't have much of a delay on the screen right now. Armand Shorts have 200 million shares. Imagine what they will be when they have to cover halfway. I know it, man. It's, a, it's Troubleville for them, man. They got many, many, many shares that they're still sitting on that they have not returned to the brokers. All right? They got a lot of them. And I tried to show you guys that here by short interest. When you click on this, fails to deliver. There is a massive amount of shares that they failed to deliver on this date, January the 23rd. They failed to deliver 40 million shares that they're still holding. 
add them up, even if they return some on the first and second, that's only three million. Now they're down to freaking thirty-seven million. And here you got two to five more. That they're at thirty-two million. Now they're down here. Two more return. They still got twenty-nine million shares to return right there. And I don't think that's even the case. But because they failed to deliver these, they failed to deliver these, they failed to deliver these, failed to deliver these, folks. They've now failed to deliver here very recently. Look at this number right here. 11 million shares on December the 5th that they failed to deliver. On 11 million shares, December the 5th. Where was the price on December the 5th when they did that? The price was, unfortunately for them, when they failed to deliver at 717 and 710 three days before, the price had gone all the way up to 775. No wonder they failed to deliver them. Here's the number where they borrowed them on the day the price got to 717 and 710. They borrowed all those shares, 17 million. They couldn't return them on this day because the price had gone up from there to 775, up 60 cents, up 58 cents. So no wonder they didn't return those right there, 11 million. Okay? And then here on December the 8th, what happened on that day? Why didn't they return that many that day? What happened on December the 8th? All right, December the 8th. They they the price was at 788. It was even higher. They could not return them. They couldn't return them. All right. <laughs> they were in trouble. Here on December 12th, it was 963,000 shares they didn't return. What was the price on the 12th? Well, it was all the way up to still at 782 and 810 from 788. They were so screwed. They couldn't return and they couldn't return. Here they couldn't return, couldn't return, couldn't return. All here through the 27th and they could not return. Why? Because SoFi's price just kept going higher to 1029 from 896. No wonder they couldn't return those either. All right. They, they were going to be at a major loss to return those shares, folks. They couldn't return those shorter positions in the sevens. That's what I'm trying to show you. Here on D January the 9th, the, there was 4 million shares they didn't return. Where was the price on January 9th? Was it below 1049? Sure. But it had been at 10817. And then on January 9th, it was at 852. No wonder they couldn't return them. The price was still way over on January 9th, those $7 prices where they couldn't return back here, all right, when it was on de December the 8th. See how this keeps getting deeper and deeper for them? And then no wonder on January 23rd, they could not return 40 million shares. Where was the price? It was rising and rising on, on December the 23rd, January, uh, December the 23rd. The price had gone from down here in the 784 where they shorted December 23rd. Of course, they couldn't return the shares. The price was at 988. Man, they were so screwed. No wonder they couldn't return those shares on January the 23rd. What was it on January 3rd? January the 23rd. January the 23rd. Where was it? Price was all the way down to 771, but they shorted at 721. So again, they failed on January 23rd. They failed because the price was at 721 on January the 19th. And by the 23rd, it had gone up 50, 60 cents on them or so. They were in trouble, folks. They couldn't return them then, and they haven't returned them all through here. All these shares they're still sitting on and not returning. These, and you can see, folks, where the price was. Look where the price was right here when they didn't return these. When they didn't return these 11 million or 12 million, the price was at 796. All right. They didn't. They sure as crap should have because now the price is only at 720 something. So they damn sure should have. They should have. But they're screwed, people. They did not return them there. They didn't return them. They're greedy. That's what it is. 796 they didn't they didn't return all these they're keeping these keeping these keeping these up into the tens they're still not returning the price keeps rising it's at 853 they they don't return 4 million 
Price is at 792. They still don't return. In fact, they don't return 339 million shares at 792. They didn't return them. They failed to return them. And they failed to return here at 840. Failed to return at 783. And now they failed to return down here at 851, 816. All these shares, folks, they're still sitting on and piling in on and not returning them. Keep that in mind. And now the price goes up even another penny in after hours because the true sentiment is coming out on this stock. <laughs> Rusty, with two R Rusty with two S's. Sorry about that, Rusty. Didn't mean to make that mistake. Katie Wentworth, wait till earnings. No, no, Kane put a, on a clinic. Oh, yeah, he's going to put on a clinic. You're right, Katie. He's going to put a clinic on and he's going to dissect them. And I want you guys to all realize something here so you can be relative and understand. Please bear with me a second. I'm going back to the price when SoFi hit the highest it's been this year. And I want to go back to that day, which was July the 31st. And I'm going to do it for you all now before I say goodbye. The price was 1170 on that day on 210 million plus shares, almost 211. What I want to show you is that one month and 10 days exactly, which is about where we are now from the earnings call, one month earlier, go back here from July the 31st to this 31st, June 31st, and there was the price and then come on back a little further and you will see the price was at 771 one month and one week before earnings 771 and the price rose from there to 1170 or 4 freaking dollars but here's the catch from 771 on June the 23rd, one month and one week prior to the earnings call, that 771 was smashed and went all the way up to 1013. And it did that from the 27th uh, of the 23rd. It did that by this date, the 19th. So it was 27 days that this price went up. And I expect from now to see a possible run to over $10 again within 27 days of today's date. Okay? So you can see what today's date is. That's going to be Tuesday, March the 26th. I say maybe by April the 21st or so, we could see that price go over 10 before it then turns around and drops down to 894 right before the earnings. Three days before the earnings, it was at 894 and went to 1170. So I'm seeing 10 days, basically 10 days before the April 29th. So on April 19th, I expect to see SoFi over $10. And you can write that down on a piece of paper. Catfish says over 10, April the 19th, back to 894, three days before earnings, and then off to the moon on earnings day. That's what I expect. So from right now, that 771, consider that today's low price of $7.17. By the way, the absolute uh, reverse of the 771, 717. Okay. So if we go from 771 on the 23rd all the way up to $10.13 on the 19th, which is three weeks. We could easily do that right now, and then we could see just before the earnings, three days before, another down run, and then off to the moon. Okay, that's what I'm calling for. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yep. And a lot of people are going to be very surprised by what happens on this earnings call. And they will have not seen it coming. And they're going to be surprised because, as I mentioned before, Katie, with PLTR, 
on their very first profitable earnings call, when they first announced gap profitability, PLTR did not make a significant move on that date. They went up a little, but not much. It was only on PLTR's second profitable earnings call that they really shot up 16% on that earnings call. That was their second one, not their first. And so now we're approaching our second one where we're going to be profitable, not just our first. And I think an even bigger run is in, in place than 16% up. I think we could easily see it go up 20 to 25 or 30 percent on that day. <clears throat> and no matter how high it goes up, I'm going to sell it right near the very high of the day, whatever it is, because my orders were already all in place, all the way up to $39.98. I'd love to see that. Yeah, that's right, Katie says. Noto did not leave Goldman Sachs at $72 million <laughs> to make nothing. That's right. Well, he's already turned his investment of stock in SoFi from buying in the sixes and the fives and the fours. That guy's already turned his $50 million investment into SoFi into big profits. All right. He's already turned 50 million of the companies investing in that he's a CEO of. And how can you not love a guy that does that kind of thing, everybody? Holy crap. Man, a cheers to Anthony Noto for stepping up there to the plate. Every time they've driven this thing down below seven and he buys more. And not only that, Katie, check this out. His wife, Krista, has been buying shares of SoFi herself. There's been disclosure that SoFi's CEO, Anthony Nodo, his wife, Krista, owns a bunch of shares of SoFi. I'm going to show you right here. Hold on just a second. This is cool. Google. Anthony Noto. Wife. Krista. Owns SoFi stock. And I got to spell it right. All the women out there in the world thinking about a stock to invest in, she knows. There it is. A Tuesday regulatory filing from SoFi ticker. Anthony Noto showed that his wife, Kristen Noto, bought 33,359 shares. And look at the day she did it on. David Chia Pansy Day, when the price hit a low of 445. She's practically doubled her freaking money, everybody. How do you like that? Yeah, I'm going to ring the bell when I see that. That Anthony Noto's wife was smart enough to know that that dipshit that downgraded the stock didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Excuse my language. But she knew that he didn't know. And she stepped in and bought 33,259 shares on May the 15th, David Chia Pansy Day. Good for her. God bless her soul. And everybody who's on this channel with me right now to see that right there. That the CEO's wife said, screw that guy. I'm going to buy a bunch of shares myself. And she did. That's what my wife would do. You know, Cheryl, she'd step right in there just like that. You guys all need to see that, man. That's awesome. <clears throat> She's made a fortune off of that. $4.45 and the price is $7.25. Let's see how much money she's made. $7.25 minus $4.45 equals two dollars and eighty cents a share she's made two dollars and eighty cents a share possibly a bite uh and she bought thirty three thousand two fifty nine times thirty three thousand two fifty nine equals she's made freaking ninety three thousand dollars off of david chia head yep i love it and you guys should love it too showing that piece of crap that she's not going to stand around and let her husband's company get run in the ground. She's going to step up beside him and buy a bunch of damn shares too. Gosh, dang it, man. That makes me excited, people, to show you guys that. Man, that makes me fired up when I see that, man. That makes me want to wish every one of you to just be just as diligent as she is. And when they try and drive this thing down, step in there with Kristen and buy some damn SoFi. Don't complain. Buy more. That's what she didn't do that day. 
she didn't sit around and mope her head and drop her and kick her the can down the road and all upset. She said, damn it, I'm buying freaking 33,000 shares of this son of a gun now and I'm going to make 90 grand off of it in six months. She could have made a lot more than that. And from, in fact, from that day, she could have made a 125% gain if she sold that stock when it hit 1023 on June the 14th. But she didn't sell it. And she hasn't sold it. And she's not going to sell it. She's waiting for it and her husband to get to $25 a share. And she's waiting for it to hit 35. And she's going to be happy to wait until it hits 45. Don't only really have the CEO stepping in and buying up shares, but the CEO's wife, for God's sakes. How many companies do you think you could say that about? No data. The stream will end shortly if unless you restart it in your streaming software. Screw that, man. I never stopped streaming it. I didn't stop. It says right here, YouTube is not receiving enough smooth to remain smooth streaming. Well, that's okay. If it cuts off right now, folks, I'll see you tomorrow at 1020 in the morning, 1030 or 920 to 930, somewhere around there. Trying to get up a little bit earlier and make sure I get uh, up and broadcasting tomorrow. I am so res I am so excited to see this damn stock just looking so freaking good in this after hours right now. And I'm glad you're here with me, everybody. This up over 50 likes. I see error. YouTube is not receiving enough signal. We got a bunch of kids out. It goes, uh, hey, Brooklyn, the stock shop. Let, let me read this by Katie Wentworth. Hey, the Brooklyn stock shop guy sold all his SoFi and bought P. Screw up. PGY stock. Yahoo. Pagaya. I have heard of this. Yep. I've, I've clicked on this before. Someone mentioned it to me one time in the past, and it was quite some time ago when someone mentioned this stock to me. In dollars, I think I'll stick with one that's got a market cap where we are. I think I like us a lot more than that. Now I'm going to look over here. Oh, my God. Tell this guy to get out of this thing. What a stupid move. Look at their, look at their earnings and revenue here for the last. Miss the street. Miss the street. Miss the street estimates. Miss the street estimates. And I want you to realize, folks, they have been negative in earnings, negative in earnings, negative in earnings, always negative in earnings. Their revenue is a fraction of what SoFi's revenue has been. And I say, good luck with you, my friend, with one strong buy, four buys, and two holds. <laughs> All right. Good for him. I would not agree with that decision. I would not agree with that decision at all. I think I'd rather buy this stock here today, which I did at $7.18 a share. And uh, I was very glad to see that it closed above the price that I bought it this morning at the low. And I'm glad to see that it's resiliently responding to the manipulation efforts this afternoon and is now truly at $7.25 a share. And you're not seeing MMs influence it now. It's making the true value sentiment of the market that it would have achieved already, and it's going to go higher. And folks, in my opinion, I'm going to be seeing a repeat now of the same thing that happened when they ran the price down to 671 just before the J July the 21st, when they ran it down to 771 on June the 23rd, one week and one month away from the highest price it's ever been at 1170. So I see the timing of this right now is identical timing. 786 a share was three weeks before the earnings call came out. And they ran it up to 1013 within the next two weeks before a little pullback and then the run to 1170. I expect the same thing now. I expect the same thing now. And it's already started this afternoon, even. All right. <clears throat> Anyway, I don't even know who the Brooklyn stock shop guy is, to be honest with you. All I know is, I know what these charts are showing me. And I know what the shorts are doing with shares that they're running out of. And I'm going to go over here right now, short interest. And I want to click on this. And I want to see this. I'm going to see how many they've returned this afternoon. And how many they're returning right now is probably part of the reason 
that they are starting to see that we're starting to see a little increase in after hours. Yep. See from nine hours ago, they've returned some here. They've returned a little more. And just now an hour ago, they returned 200,000 more. This might be part of the reason the price has gone up in the after hours. They're going to have to start returning these shares. They just can't, they can't just keep denying returning the shares and failuring to deliver over and over indefinitely, folks. They're going to come due on these guys. And when they do, they're going to be in deep trouble. All right. Now I want to get over here. And I just want to look at SoFi institutions. SoFi institutions, owners, institutional ownership. Oh, yeah. I'm coming in here on this. And interesting to see here on this page, SoFi institutional ownerships, they're showing the real-time price right now. At what I just saw there was seven dollars and twenty eight cents. Now I don't know whether that's still the case or not, but I'm going to get down here because I want to see how many institution owners. Ah, yeah, <laughs> I knew it. Another one came in long today. Now seven ninety nine, and we have increased by another fraction of a percent, and we're about to go over forty percent institutional ownership with volume, which was at three eighty seven million, now at three hundred and ninety million. All right. Another one bought in today. Vanguard Group recently improving their share percentage by 19%. Why in the hell would Vanguard do that and jump from only 68 million shares to 81 million shares? Why would Vanguard be doing that now before, just before the earnings calls coming our way? And now I get over here to the 26th. And I'm looking at all these people increasing their share by 8%, by 7.38%. This was all on the 26th, increasing by 14% today, increasing by 135% their value today. This is all today, folks, increasing by 3%, increasing by 7%. Today, increasing by 3.69, increasing, increasing by 1%. Increasing today by 36%, increasing today by 31%, increasing, oh, that was yesterday. Look at all those buys today, folks, and look at the amounts of them. 311,000, 427,000, 218,000, 222,000, 111,000, folks. Schwab, uh, Schwab coming in. Oh, you guys see that? Man, that's a lot of institutions adding to their portfolios. We only saw one more institution come in long today, but a lot of institutions came in today and added to their portfolios. And every single one of them taking up long positions, I only saw uh, during the 26th, I only saw this one short position on the 25th. But look at all these longs coming in. One, two, three, four, five as of NF, FMCL. Six, seven, eight, nine institutions today adding to their SoFi portfolios. And they're not new ones. They're ones that already own portfolio shares of SoFi at higher prices. Their dollar cost averaging down. When they manipulate this down now, we're getting a lot of institutions starting to get more shares on these drops in price. Make sure you're very aware of that, everybody. That's good to see. And no wonder the price is at 726 and after hours up six cents. Folks, congratulations to every one of you who bought shares with me today at 717. And 718, 719, 720, you did good. You did damn good. And you're going to be very, very happy with what you just invested in today with me. S-O-U-N. Let's get over here and see what's gone on with it today. It was manipulated in the last 20 minutes of the day very heavily. I expect to see it spring right on up in the after hours. 
They still may try to suppress, but I don't think so. SOUN's not moving. BITF, look at that manipulation today on it. This is what they've been doing with Bitcoin going through the roof. Bitcoin here hits another, another high. Today goes over 70,000 again. Then they drove it down. Uh, look at SoFi 726 now. Well, no more is SoFi down 3.3%, folks. It's only down 25 And I got news for you. It was up more than that yesterday. Up more than 2.5 at the end of the day yesterday. So, so much for their efforts today. All worthless, pointless efforts. Oh, my God. Every single one of them that tried to drive us down, manipulating and seeing it all backfire on them now. And I come back over here to take a look at SoFi and I want to look at short interest and I want to see right here under this category, short interest. And I want to see how much volume there is left to borrow. I want to see how many they return. I don't, I won't be surprised at all to see them use every one of these shares again tomorrow morning at four o'clock like they've been doing. Every morning, this is the price at four in the morning, 400,000 shares. Today, four in the morning, 450,000 shares. Tomorrow, four in the morning, we'll probably see the same amount, 400 to 450. <clears throat> Don't know for sure, but I know this is getting troublesome for them. And I know they sure as shit can't believe that they're seeing this damn thing in the after hours up six cents. I, can, I know they can't believe it. And it must be hard for many of you to believe because we never see SoFi up in the after hours after the closing. Ah, Levin Henley. Hey, Cavish, I'm back. Did you buy some more SoFi today? Yes, I did. You should have known better. <clears throat> Look at these prices where I was able to obtain SoFi today. This is beautiful. I will show you right now. I bought right there 100 shares at 718 a share. 100 at 718. Okay? Then I came over here and I bought some more shares right through this range right here. I bought at 7... Uh, let me get it up close to so you can see there. I bought at 7... 25, 725, 725, 730. I just kept buying. I was buying check, 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 check. I bought all through those prices. And I'm very glad that I did. And I got the low of the day almost when I bought it at 718 there, 100 shares. And uh, I bought it also at 721, 722, 723. Very happy with those purchases this morning uh, on the lows. Because I knew it was there. I knew it was at the bottom. And uh, this is proof of the fact here for sure. Looking at it at 726 in the after hours. This thing's freaking, she gone, baby. She gone. All right. Well, ARC bought 750 million more, well, the other day. Oh, I know. ARC Investments increased their in percentage on um, SoFi massively. I was showing everybody that over here. If you go over here and you look at this SoFi, you'll see right here, you'll see where ARK Investment came in and increased their portfolio value in SoFi by 106% value. You see that? They now, <clears throat> they're now holding, I think they're in the number fifth spot for the highest shareholders of SoFi stock now, up into the fifth spot. Yep, I saw that. Yep. $750 million more. I know. And they they increased their portfolio. Uh, uh, that was on uh, March the 21st. 106%, folks. On March the 21st. 106%. You might want to ask yourself, well, where was the price on March the 21st? Well, I'll show you. March the 21st. SoFi's stock price was right here when she bought up and increased to 126%. March the 21st was right here, and the price was at 736 a share to 757 when she increased all those shares. So how long do you think they're going to hold it down here at 716 today? Forget about it, people. This thing is history. The lowest, 
they could get here just on March the 6th was 705. 705 and today we're 11 cents above that. Man, they're in trouble, folks. 682 is where we were just a week ago. They can't get there and they're not going to. Even as hard as they try, they cannot make this price fall back to 682. They're not going to get it there. <clears throat> they're not. <clears throat> Very wise of you to point that out. I appreciate you telling me that. And everyone else, Levin Hendley, I appreciate it. Now it is time for me to say farewell. It is time for me to go snack on something. I had a little afternoon snack my beautiful wife brought for me. But I just want to thank each and every one of you to pay an attention to it. These details that I'm showing you each and every day. I want you to be aware that it is highly, highly probable and possible that right now from today's low, we could see the price surge just like we did back in July. We could now see the price from the low that was 10 days before the earnings call and one month. This was June the 23rd. This was 10 days and one month before the July 31st earnings call and SoFi hitting 1170 on about the same day as today. They drove the price down to 771. And then, folks, after they did that, which is about where we are now, they are at the same time, we're just, a, just barely over a month and three days away. This was a month and 10 days. Then, look at this. They drove the price up from that price a month and 10 days before earnings to all the way up to 1013. And that happened exactly 11 days before the earnings and then for six days, they drove it down. <clears throat> so I therefore think that 11 days before earnings, which is coming on April 29th, we're going to see a high on April 19th. And I believe for six days, they'll pull it back to April the 25th. And after that, I think it will go to the freaking moon again. The same thing that it did before. I could be wrong, but we'll all find out if I'm right or not, won't we? When that all info, when that happens. So write those numbers down, <clears throat> write those numbers down and you'll see what happens. All right. In the future. Okay. Let me get this uh, beer uh, finished off with you guys right now. We're going to pull this screen up here to a full size. Ah, uh, yeah. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for being here with me this today, this morning. And those of you that got cut off in the middle of the day, I want to thank you for coming back and uh, again, liking the button, hitting the like button. And man, this makes the day viewership on my channel way higher than it would have been otherwise. And the likes as well. So that helps as well. So thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and I am going to get on my way. But like I said, I want to make this screen full up here for you guys to have the last shot with me. Last shot of beer. Here we go. Brew Tank, I missed you today. Don't know where you were. Katie Wentworth, thank you for all the things that you had to say this afternoon, too, and coming back in and visiting. And, oh, by the way, aren't you the one who sold CRSP? Before I go, aren't you the one that sold CRSP? Okay? I want to make sure I'm right. It was you, Katie, right? CRSP. I'm pretty sure, sure that you were the one that talk, talked to me about that one. And I want to say that I told you that day to sell CRSP CRISPR, okay? And the reason that I'm showing you this now is because if it was you that said that, look where the price is now, and I told you to sell it at $82, I'm pretty sure. CRSP. Now, I know it went up after that, but look where it is right now. I want to make sure I'm right on this. CRSP, because I can look back over the last six months chart, and I told you to sell it here. I told you to sell it here at the 82 number right here, right around there. Did I not? I did. And I don't know whether it was you or whether it was uh, Linda or uh, who it was, but somebody said, Catfish, what should I do about CRP RSP? And I said, sell it now. Don't wait until after the earnings call. But the next day, the earnings call came out and they did drop it down the morning before. And then it went on up. 
I told you. And then look where it is now, $70. Whoever it was, somebody should be glad that they sold this when I told you to at 82 bucks. All right. Whoever it was that had this CRSP when it was at 82, congratulations for getting out. I thought it was you, Katie. All right. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. I'm going to say so long, farewell. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you drank a nice cold beer with Ty. <sighs> Refreshing. Captivating. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I am going to call it a day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll try to be up a little earlier than 930 than today. and uh, But if not, I'll be there at 930 for you. I'm going to hit the stop streaming button now. If you want to say goodbye to me, say it to me farewell right now. If not, I'm on my way out the door. I'm going to hit the door. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Fellow <clears throat> cats. Have a great day. night. See ya tomorrow in the tank. <laughs> all right. That's it. My farewell to you all. Thank you very much again. I know I've said I was going to leave for quite some time, but I am indeed going away now. And I'm wanting to wave goodbye to you all. So there's some waves to you all. And there you go, folks. It's been fun, as always. A very educational time on this channel. I hope you will agree. And I appreciate you being here with me. So, <clears throat> very good. Thank you for all of your input today. And all of the information about SoFi that you guys added to the channel today. And uh, I want to thank you again. It is time now for me to say farewell. And we're going to let King Cat say goodbye to you all. All right, everybody. Well, I've had a great time here today. Thank you for being with us on the show. Catfish, Tyler, and I are so grateful for all of you who donated to the channel this week. And there are the names of you now. J.P. Panek. Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, DB, Charche, Dalton Bush, Billy Caron, Rusty Prater, N. Clark, JT, Richard Milltown Smoke, Jeff Presley, Levin Windley, Gustav Graves, and Danny Dimes. I'm done. My time has expired. Love you guys. Have a great night. Bye bye now. We'll see you tomorrow.